Last time, Laban gives Leah instead of Rachel. Sometimes we expect Rachel and then we get a Leah. Con confrontation, confrontation, confrontation. You know, the entire life is a life of confrontation. And we've got to handle each one of them. But the reconciliation is so sweet. Jacob and the next confrontation, what could that be? Why is it necessary to overcome the present crises? Evolutionary psychosis. Jacob had come victoriously out of the crisis with Laban. And we have to do our best to reconcile. And this time Jacob was successful. Jacob was on his way to the next confrontation. Who do you think would that be? His brother, who alone could support him in this tremendous worry in his mind. He's going back all the way that he came, 20 years before. Guess what was on his mind? He's going to meet his brother. So how do you react when the dark side of your past comes back to you? You've got to face it. Face the music. Have you got to struggle with your past that keeps coming back periodically. For weeks you forget about it and then it, it comes back again. Now this does mean that the Lord has not forgiven us. Salvation is a process. When he quit smoking, a man I met in one of our great cities, it was already too late. Emphysema stepped in. He couldn't breathe. And he asked me, do you think God has really forgiven me? Why do I suffer? I confessed, why do I suffer? While he was intoxicated, he assaulted his wife one time and she lost the one eye. After his conversion, he would have given both eyes for his wife. But the damage was done. We cannot, well, we, it's hard to to fix the damage. We have to live with certain consequences. At times when he looked at her marred face, the fateful evening comes back to him. Why did I do it? He asked me, listen, has God really forgiven me? I've destroyed lives. Does he really forgive? We've hurt someone with our words and sometimes with our deeds. They may feel the pain for a lifetime. Maybe there are words in your mind that somebody told you and that word is still ringing in your mind. Now God has forgiven us, but our memory brings it back. So sometimes it's not so easy. The history of Jacob is a typical example of this phenomenon. The devil wants us to gloat over our past sins and, uh, and then we wonder, has God really forgiven us? But please don't let consequences of your past sins bring back the sins. As Jacob walks back to his home, Hebron, his homeland, is reminded of the pain he caused his brother Esau. That was bad. Up to this time, Esau has not forgiven him. No message of forgiven was given. Petra, home of the Edomites. His mother would have told him to come home after Esau had forgiven him, but it did, it did not happen. She never contacted him and she died. Do you share Jacob's pain? You want to reconcile with a family member. That's very difficult. Or a friend. But there is no response. You long for forgiveness from somebody. And you don't receive it. An irreconcilable relationship is very painful, frustrating. 
God has experienced it when Satan and a third of the angelic host walked out on him. Every difficult situation we go through, God has gone through it on a much larger scale. So he understands our traumatic experiences. Esau could see Jacob's homecoming as an attempt to get a share of his father's estate. Have your motives been misconstrued? You know, people make up their minds about you and they, they say, that, that, that's you. It's not you. But you can expect this kind of thing. Esau could kill his brother Jacob for two reasons. For coming to for coming to possess his property and for revenging him for his detestable deceit. When you think of someone cruel who hates you, you experience a strange emotional fear. My brother hates me and every time he thinks of it, he goes through this unpleasant emotion. Fortunately, Jacob also cherished God's promises that he would protect him. And you know, this is good therapy. These things will come. The bad things will come back. But put God's forgiveness next to it. Please recall the promises of God when your life is threatened. Always cherish something positive in your mind. Don't concentrate too much on the negative side. So Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. What a gift. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. And he called the name of that place Maha Naim. Where did he meet these angels for the first time? At Bethel. Here yeah, he sees them again. He's so anxious, his brother could kill him. But angels are there. This is what Jacob needed in this time of trouble. God's loving care through angels. And my friend, this is what we also need so desperately in our struggles with past sins. And by the way, remember you've got two guardian angels and they want to help you. God wants you and me to remember that he loved us to such an extent that he gave his only begotten son to die for our sins. God is always on the side of the sinner. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for these who will inherit salvation? If you've decided to follow God, you will have two angels all your life. These camels in the north of Jordan reminds us of a great reconciliation that took place right here. Jacob and Laban eventually reconciled. It was just after this that reconciliation of a similar nature happened. The theme of God's plan of salvation is reconciliation. And you know what? God takes the initiative. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. In a reconciliation, new motives, new joys are born. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Don't sweep up people against one another. Reconcile people. So Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. By the way, this is where David, when he fled from Absalom, also came to this place. Where did he see them previously, these angels? Bethel. This is Mahanim. In Hebrew it means the two camps. Angels behind the rear and angels in front. While Jacob was approaching the Jabbok River, a large number of angels 
appeared unto him. Some were before him, and God opened his eyes, he saw them. And some were behind him, he saw them. Ah, oh, I wish I could see my angel, but he's working hard with me. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. The most dangerous thing to do is to trust in yourself. Transfer your trust to Christ. What a comforting thought from Psalms. How do you handle conflict? What options are there for Jacob? You could have ignored his brother, crossed the river and possessed the land that God had promised him. This was one way. This is one of the options. Ignore your irreconcilable enemies. Ignore them. It does not solve the problem. He could have clothed himself in a cloak of, I am holier than thou, and sent Esau the following message. Dear brother Esau, God had chosen me to receive the blessings and the responsibilities of the firstborn. He told me to come and claim my rightful heritage. Don't even attempt to hurt me. The God who chose me above you will severely punish you. This is the aggressive star. Please contact Laban and you will hear what happened to him when he tried to harm me. Greetings from your newborn brother, Jacob. Bad option. And then at the end of the letter, Notabini, when I get to Bathsheba, I will claim my rightful inheritance. Please don't let this matter go to court because you will be ruined, Esau. I like what Charles Spurgeon writes. I've been to his tabernacle in London. He's one of my, my role models. He says, the greatest enemy to human souls is the self-righteous spirit which makes men look to themselves for salvation. We cannot solve our problems. God has got to help us with this. Don't be self-righteous. You are not self-righteous. You're a fallen sinner. Simul justice is, and simul justice at Peccator, as Luther often writes in his works. Jacob chose a third option to handle the conflict between him and his brother. I call it the Jesus option. He's the only role model to follow, by the way. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We call this Lex Talionis. Only one tooth, not twelve others, if you want to retaliate. The, 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 the definition of Lex Talionis is that the punishment should match the offence. And this is what Jesus was trying, trying to tell. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. You know, we want to resist them. We want to tell them their fortune. Jesus says, don't resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek could be very sore, humiliating. Turn the other to him. This takes something. And by the way, sometimes we need a, a slap. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. A new approach to conflict resolutions. My fallen nature wants me to react otherwise. But the Gospel says, this is the way. It's cheaper to get another cloak than to go to court. Malpost sit nibu. And whoever compels you to go one mile, says Jesus, go with him too. And by the way, there's no traffic jams on this second mile road. Not many people travel there. But God wants us to travel there. Anger is confrontational. It is not 
therapeutic. It is damaging. If you're shouting and screaming at somebody, it brings out the bad in someone. Instead of solving problems, you create new ones. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. I like this. In gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Don't be judgmental. Be kind. When you speak to somebody, cry with him. Don't scream at him. Jacob gets a bright idea. He's going to be the least and walk the second mile. He's going to tell Esau that he is coming back. He should know what's, what his movements are. He's going to tell him that he is so sorry of what happened 20 years ago. And he receives peace of mind. Then Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother in the land of Seir, the country of Edom, and he commanded them, saying, Speak thus to my lord Esau. He puts him on a pedestal. Thus your servant Jacob says, I've dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now. So Esau's got to get some info from his brother Jacob. How would you have reacted to your deceitful brother's plea? He's coming now with this approach. Would you have told Jacob that uh, he is more than welcome to return? Would you do that? Maybe there is someone like Jacob in your life who also seeks forgiveness from you. Don't let that person suffer. Forgive them. Maybe someone feels sorry because he or she have hurt you. you know, at times we hurt people. Maybe they've asked you to forgive them on previous occasions, quite a few times. But you are so hard, you will not give forgiveness. Although Esau still had some interests at Beersheba, he moved temporarily to the Seir Mountains. This is where Petra is. At a later stage, he defeated the Horites who lived here and made this his home. The beauty of Petra and its colorful tombs remind one of the proud Esau who lived here. Why did the Edomites, now this is the posterity of Esau, disappear? Two things, the Bible says. Pride, and sometimes we think we are so wonderful. Pride and rejoicing at the destruction of Jerusalem. When Jerusalem in, uh, in 586 was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, they were there. And they even laughed and said, ha ha, to the poor Israelites. Two things, pride and rejoicing at the destruction of Jerusalem. And the Edomites are gone today. And what caused ancient Tyre to have disappeared in the sea? They also said, ha ha, when Jerusalem fell. Every time I visit this beautiful city of Petra, I'm reminded of the message of Obadiah, the prophet. He writes, Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be greatly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you. No future for an Esau disposition. Don't be satisfied with yourself. Be humble. You will dwell in the clefts of the rock whose habitation is high. You say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? The Edomites challenged the world to bring them down. But it happened when the trade route changed and became city of the dead. 
the beauty of the place reminds one of the ugliness of pride. I like to meet, talk, associate with humble people. Don't let people feel that you are way above them. They will detest you. You are looking at a sight which the prophet saw in a vision high up. They lived up high up. Though you ascend as high as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, says the Lord. Don't experience the humility of coming down. Stay on the ground. Because Edom was continually in conflict with Israel, the name became synonymous with the enemy when you read the book of uh, Ezekiel and Jeremiah. When the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem, Edom assisted them. Do not rejoice over the downfall of your enemies. It may cause your downfall. Climbing up here, I saw something very interesting. A little girl, a Bedouin girl. Here she lived, and her forefathers were the proud Edomites. Look at this. It could be. The Edomites intermarried with the Nabataeans, and this old lady still has Edomite blood in her veins. One day Esau received a message that Jacob was on his way to Canaan. What? His blood boiled, and he commanded 400 soldiers to go with him to kill his brother. The anger never left him. Do not cherish hatred, because hatred could lead you to kill somebody. Two companies approached one another. Different emotions occupy their souls. Who wanted to walk the second mile? Jacob's servants bows down before Esau and before his soldiers, very humble. And then, then they, they give this, this message, Esau, your servant Jacob, your servant Jacob sends his greetings. Be the least in a conflict. The God of Abraham and Isaac blessed him with many camels, donkeys, flocks of sheep and goats and slaves. My Lord, Jacob wants you to accept the gift from him. He needs the assurance that he is welcome to come back to you. No reply from Esau, only a stern look on his face. Jacob's deception comes back to him. How can I trust someone who has broken a trust? This was Esau's struggle. This is our struggle at times. How can I trust somebody who has broken a trust? You can never trust him again. We can argue this way. My friend, tell me, are you willing to give your offender a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance? God gives us thousands of chances. Can't we just give somebody who offended us another chance? What does God expect from us? What is Esau going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to meet an enemy. What are you going to do? Either we are going to give our enemy another chance or... And by the way, one of the cruelest things we can do is to withhold our forgiveness from someone who craves for it. What is the greatest gift God gives us? Somebody is waiting, perhaps, for you and I to receive the precious gift from us, the gift of forgiveness. It's a precious gift. God had to die to give us this gift. And we have to die to forgive people, die to self. Next time we will hear what happened in Esau's heart in this situation and how he reconciled 
with his twin brother Jacob. The practice of peace and reconciliation is one of the most vital and artistic human actions. Father in heaven, are there grudges in our hearts? Is somebody asking our forgiveness? Help us to give it. It's a great gift. And help us to be like Jesus. And I pray this in the name of the forgiving Jesus. Amen.